Welcome, and thank you for joining me. We are going to be exploring one of my favorite cards, the High Priestess. I've always resonated with this card, and I love all of the depictions of this card, even if the two newer versions don't carry the symbolism of the original tarot. The modern interpretation of the card for divination is mystery and intuition. Colette Baron reeds card is of a young woman. There is a hint of a winged crown upon her head. She emerges from a blue-green background, and beneath her is a triple moon symbol, and at the center is what looks like a Celtic knot in a pattern that usually invokes the Trinity. Colette says, Some things are not meant to be known intellectually, but are meant to be experienced through the intuition. Page 4. In the Light Sierra's Tarot, the High Priestess is depicted as a woman with her eyes closed, but at the same time you can faintly see her eyes upon the closed lids. She has the crescent moon in her hair and a cross and a fringed collar about her neck. She appears to be between two possible teal pillars with a pink background with four dots above her head. Chris Ann describes the High Priestess card as, Sacred insights and profound wisdom is flowing to you now, and to access them you must tune into your intuition and submerge your thoughts into her subconscious realm. Chris Ann's interpretation is very close to the esoteric meaning. Jason Lauderhand in Thursday Night Tarot describes the priestess as, She is the Divine Mother on the Tree of Life, enthroned in Bana, root of water. Her teachers call her universal mind, the great sea within which we live and move and have our being. In psychological terms, all the powers of Kitu represents the subconscious. Page 35. Lauderhand goes on to say, Something very interesting. Water is the main symbol of key two. It flows from the robe of the high priestess and continues flowing through the whole tarot. Page 36. A.E. Weight refers to this card as the highest and holiest of the greater arcana. Weight does not touch on any of the symbolism of this card, and this is a rare time where he says plainly what the card depicts. Weight explains that this is the Shekana and explains there is one above, but not on the Kabbalah Tree of Life, and one below, which is Makuth on the Kabbalah Tree of Life. I have covered both of these Sephiroth and videos on the Kabbalah Tree of Life, and you can find those in that playlist. Now, the Shekana is the, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, so I apologize to any of my friends who are Jewish who are listening and speak Hebrew correctly, but that is the divine feminine of the Jewish Kabbalah system. Now, let's break down the symbolism of this card with the help of Paul Foster Case. Case says the High Priestess is Prakriti, the precosmic root substance which is the substrate beneath all the objective planes of existence. Therefore, the woman in Key 2 is the first mother, or first matter, of the alchemists, who is often called the Prima Materia. Page 50. The walls of the temple in the High Priestess robes are blue. Blue is the color assigned to the moon and the color water. She sits between two pillars. The white pillar has a yod on it representing the positive aspect of polarity. The black pillar with the letter Beth upon it represents the negative aspect of polarity. The High Priestess sets between these two polarities because she is the power that equalizes the two. The base of the pillars and the seat upon which the High Priestess sits is a cube. The cube is a symbol for salt and represents earth or physical material reality. In Paul Foster Case's tarot, the top of the pillars are a flower bud to represent virginity, but in A.E. Waits they are lotus blossoms. Behind the High Priestess is a veil representing virginity. On the veil is a depiction of palm fronds that represent the Divine Masculine, and pomegranates that represent the Divine Feminine. The pomegranates are in the shape of the Kabbalah Tree of Life, with the High Priestess obscuring the central Sephiroth. The High Priestess wears a silver crown, the Medal of the Moon. The crown depicts three phases of the moon. The white robe of the High Priestess represents coldness. The blue robe that flows downward like water represents water. These are the two astrological attributes of the moon. The scroll on the High Priestess lap represents memory. The word on the scroll, scroll is Torah, which in Hebrew means law. In the rider pack, there is a crescent moon beneath the High Priestess' feet. This has been moved to the Empress in the Paul Foster Case Tarot. The lunar crescent represents subconscious activity. The solar cross on the High Priestess's chest represents the union of opposites, upright and horizontal. So essentially, the High Priestess symbolizes the subconscious intuitive mind prior to the conscious mind actively working with it. In other words, when we get to the Empress, which also represents the subconscious, it has changed. Let's think of the tarot as a progression of states of mind. We started off with a magician who is working to enact his will upon material reality. That card depicts the setting of an intention. This card is equal to that one, even though it is second, and depicts the subconscious prior to the intention being planted in the subconscious. 
Next, with the Empress, we will see what happens when that intention is planted into the subconscious. The modern interpretation of mystery when it comes to this card in divination does feel as though it misses the mark. This card has a lot of depth to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.